The tuck handstand is the hardest handstand shape. No one needs, but everybody has to learn. The tuck handstand looks cool and can develop into extremely advanced positions. It's gonna help with your banana handstand. It's gonna help with your mounts into the handstand and it can even be the key to unlocking the presto handstand. You see, there's two types of people in the world. The ones that can tuck easily and the ones that can't. This mainly depends on shoulder, lower back and hip mobility. Running the risk of generalizing a little bit too much here. It's usually women that can tuck well and men that cannot tuck well. If you're in that group that can tuck really, really well, the tuck is going to be a great shape for you to learn your first freestanding handstand. Your center of gravity is closer towards the floor. You're in a small and compact ball. Jumping into the tuck, taking the tuck off the wall is going to be significantly easier than the straight handstand for you. And with this, you can make initial gains into the freestanding handstand significantly faster. If you're in that group that cannot tuck very well naturally, every single moment working and training for the tuck is going to be the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. You might never actually learn to do the tuck really well, yet you got to keep in mind that every single moment working and training for the tuck is going to pay dividends for the rest of your life whenever you're upside down on your hands. Mastering the tuck shows that you have advanced upside down awareness, coordination and active mobility. About as much of all of this as you would need for the one arm handstand or for the press to handstand. Yet, you don't need to be able to do a tuck handstand to do the one arm handstand or the press to handstand. But what I'm trying to say is that I've never seen anyone learn these advanced handstand skills without being able to do a tuck well. If you haven't realized by now, I think that the tuck handstand is extremely fascinating and honestly, it's one of the coolest handstand shapes that there is. Hear me out. In the tuck handstand, we can truly see how forces and pressure travel through the body. Starting from the bottom, elbows are locked, shoulders are on top of the center of the hands, shoulders are fully elevated. Now the first thing we do is we engage the hip flexors to pull the bent knees down so the knees travel down towards the chest. In the same time, the lower back has to engage to pull the hips into the anterior pelvic tilt. The lower back basically has to arch slightly. There has to be this constant balance between the two. If you're pulling your knees down without engaging your lower back, your hips will flip into a posterior pelvic tilt, your lower back rounds, your mid-back rounds, and eventually your shoulders will get pushed towards the front. You're gonna end up in a tuck launch and then simply collapse. If the hip flexor would stop to engage whilst the lower back is engaging, the knees would start to travel up and you would begin to arch more. Learning to tuck handstand is a major milestone in most people's handstand journey. There are two main limiting points that you're gonna face when working towards the tuck. The first one is shoulder mobility. When your shoulders are not mobile enough, you end up in a banana handstand because your shoulders are close and your back is arching. When you're now pulling your knees down towards the tuck from this banana handstand, your back is gonna straighten out. If your shoulders cannot straighten out because they're pushed out towards the front, you're not actually in a well-aligned handstand. You're on your way to an advanced tuck launch. This is gonna require a tremendous amount of strength. So when you're practicing your tucks and it feels like your shoulders are not strong enough, most likely it's not that you're weak, but it's actually just because you're a little bit too stiff. Training the tuck, especially with its progressions at the wall, is gonna help you straighten out and get rid of your banana handstand. But let's assume you are strong enough you're mobile enough and it's still not working. The second major limiting point that I see in athletes learning to tuck handstand is that they don't have enough coordination. As soon as the knees bend and begin to pull down, the shoulders also close and get pushed out towards the front. But this happens way before mobility and strength could even be a problem. Your knees and your shoulders are completely unrelated. They should have nothing to do with each other. Yet, once we're upside down, we can't figure it out. Don't panic, this is completely normal. A lot of things are happening at the same time when we're upside down. You have to slow things down, you take a step back, you work on the coordination with simpler progressions for a week or two, you come back to your actual tuck training and you're gonna see it's gonna be so much easier. But don't worry, tuck handstands are not just difficult. They're also extremely useful. First of all, the tuck is gonna be a great way to get up into your handstand. You see, whenever we jump up, whenever we do any kind of a dynamic mount into a handstand, there is a part that we don't control. Let's call this part the blind spot. If your tuck is decent, jumping from the feet to the tuck is a very short distance, meaning this blind spot is very, very small. If your tuck is not that great yet, you might argue this is completely useless for you, but it's actually not. When we're doing a tuck to straight mount, we don't want to hold the tuck. You're just using the tuck to align the hips on top of the already aligned shoulders and hands. As soon as you hit this position, you shoot straight up. For this one, you don't have to be able to hold the tuck, and your tuck doesn't have to be super tight. Your tuck is also going to develop into more advanced shapes. From the tuck, you extend one leg, both legs, all of a sudden you're in an L handstand. And of course, going from a deep tuck to a tuck planche and to the crane pose. All of these combinations are going to be visually significantly more appealing and physically significantly less demanding if the tuck is something that's easy for you 
and not already something difficult, an additional stressor in your combination. Picture this, you're in a tuck, you're pulling into a deep tuck, meaning your knees are lower than your hips. Now you open your legs slightly, you extend your legs down, you straighten your knees. All of a sudden, you're in the takeoff position of the presto handstand. The lower back connects the hips with the shoulders in your presto handstand. In order to make it up during the presto handstand, your lower back has to fire up. Your lower back has to pull your hips towards the anterior pelvic tilt in exactly the same way as the lower back pulls on your hips in the tuck handstand. But it gets better than this. A very common problem with athletes learning the presto handstand is that during this takeoff, they don't stay compressed. The legs simply fly out. Now in the tuck handstand, it's not just the lower back pulling on the hips, but remember the hip flexors also pull the knees down. The tuck handstand and the takeoff moment of the presto handstand, this compression moment in the presto handstand are extremely similar. You get good at the tuck and your presto handstand is automatically gonna improve. You don't understand the engagement of the tuck at all, chances are high you will not make it work during the takeoff of the presto handstand. When you now start training for the tuck handstand, I want you to focus on four things. Number one, I want you to lay down on the floor and I want you to just practice the coordination of the tuck. Take this serious. The more that you're able to visualize the final product, the more this is gonna help you. Lay on your back with your hands overhead. Look towards your hands, elevate your scapula, lock your elbows, push your hands far away from you. And now from here, you're gonna pull one knee towards the chest and bring it back out or both knees at the same time. You wanna stay clean. You wanna pull your knees as close as you can towards your chest, but you have to make sure your hips do not flip into a posterior pelvic tilt. As in your handstand, that's gonna to translate to you falling into the tuck bone. Additionally, you're gonna to stretch to make your tuck handstand a little bit easier accessible. If you know you're struggling with shoulder mobility, work on passive shoulder stretches and activation work to not just build range, but also control in that range. For your hips, you're gonna do the obvious. You're gonna stretch your hamstrings, you're gonna stretch your glutes, and you're gonna stretch your lower back to make it easier to pull into the anterior pelvic tilt. Then, of course, you're gonna do some conditioning work to actively pull yourself towards the anterior pelvic tilt. Lastly, you're going to find a workout bench. You can do this on a table or even on your bed. You're going to lay with your back on it with one leg hanging off. Take the other knee and pull it towards your chest. You want to pull nice and tight whilst the hips hang off, whilst you're in an anterior pelvic tilt. And now your goal is basically to figure out which muscles you have to engage to hold this position actively without your hands holding the leg up. It's going to be, of course, your hip flexors that pull the knee up towards your chest but it's also gonna be your back muscles that stabilize the second leg down underneath the bench. If you can figure out this muscle engagement, you can truly feel this, there's nothing that's gonna stand between you and your tuck handstand. Once we're done with the prep work, we're gonna head over to the wall. We're gonna get started with single leg tuck slides. You're gonna start with your hips and shoulders aligned on top of the center of your hands, both feet together on top. Now one leg at a time, you're gonna pull down into the tuck and back up. Your feet stay on the wall the entire time, your knee and shin is gonna to touch the wall as the knee comes lower. You wanna make sure nothing but this leg moves. Step number two is gonna be doing the same thing, but both legs together. Significantly harder as there's significantly more pressure on your shoulders. You're only gonna go as far as you can control and as you can stay clean without your shoulders being pushed out towards the front. Now, super important here to say straight away, do not look at the wall. Look at your hands at all times. Looking towards the wall or placing the chin on the chest is gonna make it significantly easier to open the shoulders into hyperflexion. This would make the exercise significantly easier. But our goal here is not to make this tuck slide on the wall easy. I mean, if that's something that you want to do to impress your friends, then by all means, make it easy. But if you're training this in order to make your tuck handstand and your handstands overall better, then look at the floor in between your hands. Make this exercise as hard as it should be. Make sure your shoulders don't collapse towards the front as you reverse your legs and push them back up. Let's assume you got good at this. Now there's two ways how we can take this handstand off the wall. The first one, significantly easier. We're back to the single leg tuck side with the only difference that the first leg is off the wall on top of the hips, shoulders and the center of your hands and the lower back is pulling the hips into the anterior pelvic tilt so that knee that pulls down on the wall is not touching the wall. Now in this position, you want to be fingertip heavy, you're very light on the wall and all you now have to do is engage your hamstring and pull the foot off the wall. If you feel like you have to kick off the wall, jump off the wall, slide off the wall, lean off the wall, any of this, then you're not well enough aligned. Get good at this, we move on to the double leg tuck takeoff. Pull your knees all the way down into the tuck, engage your lower back to pull the hips away from the wall into the anterior pelvic tilt, bend both knees, take your feet off the wall. This one is significantly harder. The same rules apply here. Don't jump off the wall, don't take one foot after the other off the wall and try not to swing off the wall. A whole nother section of tuck exercises is gonna be the box tuck. You wanna support your knees on a box on a kitchen counter, on anything that you can find, but it needs to be quite high. The idea is that you walk very close towards the box so your hands and shoulders are aligned with your glutes sticking out slightly as your hips are in an anterior pelvic tilt. 
Now, if your box is not high enough, your hips are always going to be in a posterior pelvic tilt, which means your shoulders get pushed out towards the front, and it becomes impossible to do this box tuck exercise right. It is always better to have this box a little bit higher than too low. Here we're going to practice basically the same thing as we did on the wall. We're going to do single leg isolations, and then we're going to work on taking the second leg off the box and bringing it up into the straight hands and eventually. The big difference here is that the pressure is not horizontal, but vertical, making it a little bit less scary as your weight is supported on the box. Yet, you have to lift the leg up against gravity, meaning you're gonna need a little bit more strength in your back. You can take this box tuck exercise as far as lowering back down towards the box. This is a really great opportunity to practice deep tucks, as you have to actively use your hip flexors to pull the knees very, very low, trying to reach the box again, of course, without letting the hips fall into the posterior pelvic tilt. The final progression in your tuck journey is of course going to be lowering down towards the tuck and going back up into the straight handstand. Now you want to start practicing this one close to the wall so you can take the mount completely out of the equation. We can really focus on what we're trying to achieve here. We're going to go slow. We're going to try to stay in control at all times. As soon as you realize that your elbows bend, your shoulders collapse, or anything else is going wrong, you stop, you freeze there, and you come back up. Besides making sure that you stay clean, you also really want to pay attention to the timing between your knees and your hips. If on the way down, your knees bend faster than your hip flexors engage, your feet are gonna end up behind your handstand, meaning you're going to fall towards your hollow back handstand. You then react by engaging the hip flexors more to basically pull everything back. Now the weight's gonna end up on the side of your chest. On this side of your body, you don't have hands and you're gonna fall out. Exactly the same thing is gonna happen when you extend up from the tuck. If your hip flexors are disengaging faster than your knees are straightening, you're gonna to fall towards the back. And if your knees extend faster than the hips open, you're gonna end up in a pike handstand. I always like to imagine that I have a string attached to my feet that pulls them straight up or lowers them straight down in a vertical line only. Nothing to the back and nothing to the front. Thanks so much for watching and thank you so much for training your tuck handstands with me. If you wanna take your tuck training more serious, I've put together a whole workout collection all around the tuck. We're gonna work on preparation exercises on the floor, wall progressions, wall takeoff progressions, and then of course advanced exercises to really take your tuck handstand to the next level. There's a total of 25 workouts. Each workout lasts between 20 to 45 minutes. If that interests you, follow the link down below. If you want to learn more about handstand, have a listen to my podcast linked right here. And if you just want to start training right now, right here with me, check out this follow along class. It's going to teach you how to leave the wall for good and how to get full control of your handstand. Until next time, I'll see you at the gym.